High school football fans, we're back. Andrew Ivins, Josh Wallfish, Rocky Met Telegram Sports staff. Historic weekend last week in the Twin Counties. Five playoff games, or there were six playoff games. We went five of them, first time in five years. Um, let's just dig mm -hmm. right into this. Tarboro, we talked all season long, down year a little bit. And then uh, the biggest margin of victory, a 61 to zero win over Hopton. Biggest margin of victory since Todd Gurley was uh, in ninth grade. Well, we, we knew Tarboro was gonna win, and we knew it was gonna be bad. I don't think either of us predicted it would have been this bad. They really wanted to get Hobton done with very early. They just they put him to bed by halftime, they took the third and fourth quarter off, and now they're preparing for Lewisburg this week. Yeah, third straight shutout for Tarboro. Uh, you said Lewisburg. We both saw him in the Nash mm -hmm. County Jamboree, and Josh, I'm gonna be honest, I, I didn't think they were that good when we saw him in that Jamboree back in August. And so are we gonna see shutout number four? No, I think Lewisburg is just enough is just good enough to actually score points on Tarboro. That being said, there's still gonna be a running clock in the third quarter. So we're here in the playoffs. That's a one one AA bracket, three versus six matchup. Now I want to dive right into um, sticking with the one A's. Uh, North Edgecombe, <laughs> they're gonna uh, take on Chaka Chaka Whitney, <laughs> or is it Chaka Whitney? I don't know. We're learning as we go along. Um, what do you what do you expect from this game? I know Keith Parrish, they've had him already all season long. Yeah, no, I mean, I I think this is gonna get this is gonna be the team that showed up last week against Durham Kestrel Heights. It's not gonna be the team that showed up against Tarbo. It's the playoffs. They understand it's a win or go home. And the interesting thing is, Chaka Wayne, he at Southside really took advantage of a weak conference and won the conference. That's why they're the home team here. If North Edgecombe didn't have to play Tarbo, I think the seeds would have been flipped. And I, I, I think North Edgecombe's the better team. They're both 9-3, and three, but Chaka Winnie hasn't beaten anybody, whereas North Edgecombe has beaten some very decent teams. Yeah, one A, it's, you know, it's a little interesting there, home field advantage, how the all brackets, you know, drawn out. We've got a lot of losing teams in there. But th this is two winning teams that are going to play, yes. so it's, it's assuring. <laughs> now moving on to Southwest Edgecombe. Um, they won last week. What can we expect this week? I know you were out there at practice. Mm -hmm. um, Marcus Williams, is he going to play? But is it even the Marcus Williams show anymore, or is it the Don Devin Shaw Hyman's? Well, the thing is, Hyman's obviously going to be their feature back. Jonathan Kopp is not going to push Marcus Williams too much. It's a game time decision officially. Unofficially, he told me he's going to play. Um, whether, that, again, whether that happens, I don't know, but it's technically a game time decision. But yeah, it's going to be how far Devon Shaw Hyman can carry this team. They're facing a Northside Jacksonville team that is very, very similar to them. Power running game. They have that little quick change of pace back for Southwest. It's Barry Smith for, um, for Northside. For, for, yeah, thank you. For, for Northside, it's, it's Dwayne Washington. So two very, very evenly matched teams. It's going to be a fun game to watch. Yeah, Southwest Edgecombe had to hit the road there. Uh, Delvin Shaw Hyman, he's already 1,800 yards rushing. I think uh, Marcus Williams has 900. So that team likes to run the ball. Uh, shifting to, uh, not the big boys, but the bigger schools. Uh, Southern Nash won last week against Burlington Williams. Um, now they welcome an Eastern mm -hmm. Wayne school. And um, Eastern Wayne's 10-2. and two. They've lost, you know, basically to Havlock, who's pretty good. Uh, what do, can we expect from the Firebirds? They've had that grit. They just mm -hmm. keep winning. Uh, they were down last week, came back. Are we going to see that again? I, for, for their sake, I certainly, hope, I, I certainly hope they don't start as poorly as they did last week. I mean, Eastern Wayne is a very, very good football team. These two teams met last year with, the, with, with Eastern Wayne knocking the Firebirds out of the playoffs. So for Southern Nash's sake, I hope they start a little bit faster. I think they will start a little bit faster. I think they had a little bit of the, the nervous energy going from playing their first home game in such a long time in the playoffs. They got that out of the way, beat a very good Burlington Williams team, and, but now the, the expectations are escalated against Eastern Wayne. Yeah, that game will be in Bailey, 3A. Coach Brian Foster, he's the guy, oh, I'm not gonna change a thing. Uh, running back Grant Jones, Three straight games with under two, uh, with uh, mm -hmm. over 20 carries, and he's responded with five touchdowns. Now we got to jump into the game that me and you both missed on last week. Uh, Rocky Mount High, uh, they went to Western Alamance and they won. And you know, hats off to the Gryphons. Um, you know, I was at practice this week. They sure mm -hmm. let me know that I, I got them wrong. But now they get Southern Guilford, who is the home to Reggie Gallespie, um, who has signed to play with NC State. He, what can we expect? 12 and 0. This is, um, you know, a, a nine versus one in the 3A. It's it's going to be very exciting. If Rocky Mount can play the type of defense they've been playing all season, they got a fighting chance in this game. Because as you mentioned, if it's if, without their running without their running back, 
it's a it's a completely different team for for Southern Guilford. So I like Rocky Mount's chances. I don't know if I'm bold enough to pick them just yet. Yeah, um, I will say this, Josh. For the past two years in the 3A bracket, a one seed has fallen in the second round. I'm thinking that Rocky Mount does it this time. Experiences on defense. I got eight seniors, so. Stay tuned. I'll be at Tarboro on Friday night. Josh, where are you going to be? I will be in Bailey to see Southern National Eastern Wayne. Make sure you pick up the paper on Saturday morning and get all the coverage.